Joe Biden taking a direct shot at President Trump, condemning the president's claim that there were, quote, very fine people on both sides of the deadly protests between white supremacists and counter protesters in Charlottesville. Here's a moment. And they were met by a courageous group of Americans and a violent clash ensued. And a brave young woman lost her life. And that's when we heard the words of the President of the United States that stunned the world and shocked the conscience of this nation. All right, joining us now is Susan Bro. She's the mother of Heather Heyer, who was killed during the Charlottesville protests. She's also the president and chairman of the Heather Heyer Foundation. Susan, nice to see you again. Thank you. Good morning. So tell us about your morning yesterday when you, how did you discover that former VP Biden had made the story of Heather's death one of the focal points of his campaign launch? I started getting phone calls at uh, 20 after 7 in the morning from the press saying, how do you feel about this? And I rolled over and looked at my phone and said, feel about what? Oh. Um, I was sound asleep. And, and how, once you figured out what they were talking about and gathered your thoughts, how did you feel about it? Um, I guess I'm not surprised. It seems like Charlottesville um, has been a defining moment for a lot of people. I, I don't think we've seen him in town. I don't think he's ever been here, or maybe he has in the past. I don't know. Um, it was just sort of a feeling of, well, here we go again, mm -hmm. because uh, um, it's r referred to so often in news articles, stories. Um, it'll show up at the most unexpected moment. I'll be watching something on TV, and, and there it will be again. So yeah. it happens a lot. I, of course, it's never far from your mind and your heart. Did you, did, did former VP Biden call you about this? Um, I got a call from him yesterday at 4.30 in the afternoon. That was the first time I had ever spoken to Joe Biden or any, anybody related to his office or anything. What did he say? He's, I was trying to remember how the conversation started. Um, I remember we talked a lot about bereavement because, you know, he's lost a son and a wife and daughter. And we talked about how forming a foundation helps you survive. But that's really all the kinds of things we talked about. Um, I think he said something about I would have reached out sooner, but I wasn't sure how you would feel. And I commented, yes, I noticed you didn't mention her name because you hadn't contacted me. <laughs> so we sort of acknowledge that that much. Do you um, wish that he had mentioned her name? Not particularly. It's not about her. It, the issue is about the hate. It's not about Heather. Yeah. And so was he calling for your approval or to make sure that you were okay? I mean, what was the upshot of his call? Uh, probably to make sure I was okay. Uh, apparently there were rumors swirling that I was devastated and traumatized and none of those things were true. Um, I think it was traumatizing for some other people in Charlottesville like who? to just suddenly have that thrown up at them on the screen. And I did mention that to him that mm -hmm that probably had triggered some other people. But, but meaning no, who, like okay. her, her, Heather's friends, or, or who are you referring to? Uh, survivors, people who were there on the grounds both times for those uh, actual living scenes and not just the video. When, when you and I last spoke, it was right after the conviction of Heather's killer. And you were talking about the foundation and you were talking about your life mission and you felt that you didn't want Heather's voice and her message um, to be silenced. And, and you felt that, right. that you wanted to fight against hate. And so I wonder today, now that you've had a chance to process it a little bit, do you feel that the vice president has done you a favor in some ways by amplifying her message? Or do you wish that this weren't part of the political dialogue? Um, I think it has to be part of the political dialogue. Um, because this is a very serious problem in our country. Not only do we deal with hate crime, we have to deal with the reporting of hate crime. I'm not sure that most people are aware that none of the 40 that were injured that day when Heather was killed, 
None of that was reported in the FBI statistics as a hate crime for 2017. Why not? Um, there are loopholes in the reporting and the way the system is set up. Uh, the vast majority of hate crimes are not reported. So um, I do think it is something that needs to be discussed. We're obviously not allocating enough resources to deal with the problem because we don't even know what the problem is. I uh, recently spoke to a Virginia Advisory Board on hate crimes mm -hmm. at the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights, and I said a doctor cannot diagnose or treat a patient unless they know all the symptoms. Yeah. Our country cannot properly deal with a hate crime until we know how many and how large the problem is. Yeah. Well, Susan, we appreciate and applaud you for keeping this front of mind for people that there are hate crimes out there and what constitutes a hate crime. Thank you very much for sharing your personal reflections on all of this with us. Thank you so much for having me.